Hello and welcome to the highlights of day 8 of Legends of Chess. What a fantastic day of action it turned out to be. The top two players were up against each other, Magnus Carlsen and Nipomishi. Anand was involved in the battle of the basement with Dingleden. And the two Russians, Peter Swidler and Kramnik, were engaged in a battle that, that was to virtually decide one of the spots for the semi-finals. Now this turned out to be a no contest if you compare it to the expectations that uh, were there after Anand beat Boris Gelfand in the previous round. Somehow it turned out to be a completely off day for Anand uh, where he somehow just didn't get off the blocks. He played white in game 1 and 3 and lost both of them in a flash. Uh, the second game uh, where he played black was an even sort of a contest but that didn't really help because the game was over in just three games. And uh, that left Anand, Dinglerin, and uh, Peter Liko uh, sharing the eighth spot. That means they are going to bring up the rear in the tournament, uh, occupying the spots eight, nine, and 10, uh, no matter what happens in the last round. So just if we take a closer look at what really happened to Anand's games, uh, in the first game, he uh, made a very early mistake. There was a retreat of the knight where he suddenly left the center very weak, lost the central pawn. His king was um, on the queen side where he had castled, and there was this barrage of attack uh, from uh, Dengleren who had resourced his pieces so beautifully, and Anand just didn't have the resources to defend the position. Now, usually Anand is known to be a fantastic defender, but yesterday was not his day. And the same thing happened in round three, in game three, where uh, again he made a very early mistake and just couldn't recover. And Dingleren was at Anand's throat, and uh, there was uh, there was disappointment all over uh, on the social media and uh, those watching uh, on various social platforms. And uh, of course, it was. In once very simple terms, it was just not Anand's day and probably his worst display in eight rounds. Past that this was, in my view, the final before the final, and it lived up to that pre-game hype that these two players they they played five games. Um, at one point, uh, it seemed that uh, Carlson would win uh, the best of four rapid games. But uh, despite dominating every single game, if you see round one, uh, Carlsen should have won it hands down, but credit to Nepomishi for defending the position so well. Round two, Carlsen was at his best. I mean, the kind of combination that he produced to stump Nepomishi, I mean, this particular game in my book would go as the, one of the finest of the tournament. Again, in round three, uh, Carlsen was on the verge of winning. And uh, credit to Nepomishi for finding the defensive resources there. And, you know, when you're down against the world champion, it's not easy to play uh, and find those moves and to make Carlson think. And Carlson thought that he had almost finished the match there, but that was not to be. Uh, somehow, Nepomishi escaped. Uh, not because Carlson made some mistakes, because Nepomishi found the right moves at the right time. And then in game four, now, this is where Carlson just needed a draw to end the match. But I think it was move number 20 where Nipomishi saw a trick and uh, straight away uh, went for a sacrifice of his rook for a bishop. And thereafter, he just made things happen. Now, here, Carlson could have defended it better, but somehow the, uh, he, didn't, he didn't do it the way he's normally expected to. Uh, he gave uh, Nipomishi a lot of space. And Nipomishi got the belief that yes, he could convert that position. And he went on to convert it with his bishop and three extra pawns, whereas uh, Carlsen had just one rook, and that was not enough to save the situation. So it became 2 2. Now came the most exciting part of the match, which was an Armageddon game, five minutes to Nipomishi, four minutes to Carlsen, and the game just went on when these two. Uh, masters of speech has showed what they're capable of doing and these two they just blitzed moves in a flash and there was a time when Carlson had just about 20 minutes on his clock and he played some six to seven moves 
and it gave the impression to those watching that he didn't let the clock move. It was almost like in a second or in a fraction of a second he was making the moves and uh, eventually uh, he managed to draw the game uh, in a superior position. Uh, he still had uh, some seconds left when the game ended in a draw and that was uh, what Carlson needed to win the match. So Carlson won 3-2, just retained his lead and uh, ensured that uh, you know, he was the man who was going to top the field because now he's up against Kramnik. Now Kramnik's confidence is going to be a little low because uh, Swidler dented it quite badly uh, in their game. And uh, this is despite the fact that Kramnik had his opportunities to win against Swidler. At least in two games, uh, he should have uh, beaten Swidler, but credit to Swidler, much like Nepomishi, who defended the position well, and Swidler did exactly that in his game against Kramnik. Against, against, you know, against two world champions, one a former champion, one the current champion, these two players, uh, Nepomishi and Swidler, showed what defensive resources mean in a game of chess. It is not just you attack and win. Sometimes you win because you defend better. And uh, both these Russians showed that the basics are strong and uh, the kind of work that they do uh, during off season that all shows uh, over the board so fantastic display of defensive resources how to use it and how to actually stay confident that yes a certain situation uh, can be saved and they actually showed that and that too against players of quality it was Anish Kiri now one of the contenders he's holding on to the third spot he was up against Vesely Ivanchuk now he took the lead against Ivanchuk but then I've always maintain you cannot undermine Ivanchuk and this is exactly what he did. He lost one game, bounced back and then finally won the Armageddon. So it was fantastic from Ivanchuk. Unfortunately he's not going to be there in the semi-finals because he doesn't have enough points but the way he has played so far in this tournament he has uh, done credit to his uh, reputation and uh, he has added a lot of value to this tournament. He has added to the excitement quotient of the tournament. And uh, there are a lot of people who just sit and watch Ivanchuk play and they are not so much concerned about some of the other, other uh, players because Ivanchuk is not going to be seen among the elite very often. Uh, so this is a huge opportunity to see uh, players testing their skills against Ivanchuk and there are times when Ivanchuk comes out stronger. We are aware that Magnus Carlsen and Nepomishi have already occupied the top two spots. Now we are left with the remaining two. Anish Kiri is a serious contender for the third spot. And for the fourth, it's going to be a race between Swidler and Kramnik. Now Kramnik's task is cut out. He plays Magnus Carlsen in the final round and he faces a must-win situation if he has to qualify. Now he has to not only beat Magnus Carlsen but also hope that, that Anish Giri beats Swetler. Now, if that were to happen, then Kramnik comes in. Otherwise, we are going to see Kramnik out of the top four, and that will be left to Carlson, Nepomishi, Anish Giri, and Swetler in that order.